Today's video is going to be around your purchases training, uh, just your basic, um, going through the basic module here, how to create a supplier, smart orders, purchase orders, and so on. Um, but first things first, we're going to jump into our utilities, preferences, go to our purchases, and set up this information accordingly. So whatever fields you want to add as a default setting, go ahead and add those. If we look at our general print barcodes on receipt of goods, print barcodes on order of goods and so on. So just go ahead and double check what settings you want available. Also another one to look at is use foreign currencies if you are going to be doing that. So again just go ahead and double check those preferences. We jump back out and we go to our purchases. The first things first is that we are going to need to create a supplier. Now before we go ahead and do that, if we look at our um, purchases screen here, we can see um, supplier, supplier list, smart order, smart order list, and this will be the norm for all of these um, tabs if we go ahead and look at them. So underneath the tab of purchase order will be the equivalent list again with return authorities and so on so if you know um, what tab you want to use underneath that is going to be the relevant list so what we're going to do is jump into our purchases and go ahead and create a supplier first things first this is where you're going to enter out all their general information company name uh, first name last name telephone number address information email um, copy to bill to address if it's the same you'll have a full history of your supplier, you can add contacts and so on. But we're gonna go ahead and look at one we've created earlier. If we go ahead and look at our Bridgestone company, we can see the name of the company, the contact name, telephone number, address information, general information. This is gonna be regards to their accounts um, and if they have EFT options, their term options, um, so select what terms they have. You can select discounts for these terms, and that is in another video. But um, this will determine their basic um, EFT um, and term information. We can see a payment method EFT, call priority, foreign currency if it, if they are using that, and so on. Full customer history, everything you've ever done, or sorry, full supplier history, um, everything you've ever done with the supplier, right here. Again, simply double click and it will take you back to what makes that field up. Um, equipment, so this will be um, supply equipment will be regards to with any repairs you need to do for the supplier and the related equipment um, with that supplier. So you can go ahead and add those and again your basic supply information, documents and so on. So again, real simple to create one. Again, simply just click supplier, fill out the basic relevant uh, relevant information, which is going to be the, um, the supply information tab, address information tab, and your contacts um, tab, where you can create new, um, you can create multiple contacts within the same company. And those are going to be your basic fields for setting up a supplier. Once that's done, go ahead and hit save. Once you've created your supplier, you can then look at doing smart orders, purchase orders, uh, and so on. The difference between a smart order and a purchase order, a smart order is going to be, um, you, all your employees have said, listen, yeah, we need this and this and this, um, and even from all your different departments, and they would create a smart order, so a list of um, equipment or whatever they need, they would create that list. Um, so each in individual employee or whoever has rights to smart orders can create that. From then on, you can merge these smart orders to create one big smart order and then create your purchase orders from that. So this is just a way of creating that list and creating that group before you create your purchase order. Purchase order is going to be for more single type items or whatever. and your smart order is going to be for your groups. Um, a bill is going to be uh, for when you want to post your expense accounts. 
um, so if you have a telephone bill etc you can post from there as well as that uh, which we'll get into later if your supplier um, you're bringing in goods and you've got a, a landed cost to bring in or a delivery cost to bring in you would create a bill for that and you would import those costs within your purchase order but we'll go ahead and look at that uh, later so what we can do now is we can go ahead and create a basic smart order simply select um, what the smart order is going to be for so the product unit of measure to purchase however many of those is there any to be built what's the quantity available what's on order and so on is there a preferred supplier add a supplier for that uh, sorry not a preferred supplier add a supplier that that's going to come from if there is a preferred supplier number and name and so on so go ahead and double check all of that once you've created that you can create multiples again hold down shift in the down arrow you can add another item apples and there we go once that's done we can go ahead and um, create the purchase orders straight away from that um, or we can go ahead and just save this so I just give it a description I'll say test test smart today's date now that we've created that smart order we can simply just jump into the smart order list and we can look for that smart order we just done in uh, we can look at incompleted smart orders completed smart orders or all smart orders so just bear in mind which uh, field you've selected on as a filter so we're going to look on incompleted we can see there's that test smart order double click and it will take you back to that smart order that is done what we can also um, what we can also do from here now is we can merge smart orders if we choose so simply select hold down shift or hold down control select which ones you want to select and we can um, select which smart orders we would like to merge so if we want to merge these two click merge new and it will merge those smart orders together so we can see we created the smart order with the apples and beer and now we're going to merge it with this smart order here once that's done we can go ahead and create the purchase order for that um, click on show because we want to see the purchase order and we can create that as well from the screen um, you can um, email them print them create new and so on so but we're going to go ahead and cr uh, create these purchase orders So there we go, our purchase order is created and it will tell us within our smart order list um, that these two have been merged. Double click and it will show you what's been converted and so on. So that's how you would merge your smart orders, create them um, and create your purchase orders from that. Um, another way of creating a purchase order is simply by just cl clicking on purchase order dropping in a supplier, so coke, drop in a product, let's have a look, so blue pen, 10 of those. From this step you can now receive these go uh, goods in and add that supplier invoice and that invoice date once received in or um, if we've just sent out the purchase order and we haven't receipted any in, um, 10 of them will go to back order. So I've ordered 10, the 10 are going to back order. I can allocate these if I choose so. Um, but for now, we are going to back order these in. Again, if, if it's in foreign for the supplier, you can um, use foreign currency if you choose so. Uh, but we're just going to save that. If we then want to go to our back orders, we can simply click on back orders button here and we can go to purchase order back orders we can go to invoice back orders and we can go to sales order back orders another way of going to your back orders is going to the relevant list um, so we're looking at our purchase orders list and we're going to click on back order list at the bottom here that'll take us to our back orders that we've done we can see now here's our blue pen we just did quantity 10 are in back order and that total cost 
We double click on that, it'll open up the back ordered purchase order and we can receive in these goods now. We can receive them in as, uh, as one shot and that'll allocate um, none to back order or we can receive in five and it will automatically re um, receive those five in and allocate the remainder to the back order. But what we're going to do is we're just going to receive them all in like so and we're going to add that supply invoice, give it a date, hit save. Real simple in doing a purchase order like that. If you wanted to run a, re a return authority, the reason behind that is that you would want to say um, you've purchased order or you've ordered a good uh, product in um, and you've sent it back to be repaired. So not a refund, but you've just sent it back to be repaired. Um, this is where you would enter in that return authority. Select the supplier. Uh, so jump out of there. Select the product what the quantity was, what the status of that was, um, is it related to a job, a customer job, who is it related to, uh, we can say this one, what's its relevant information, estimated time of arrival, um, and so on. Again, the status of it, area number, and so on. So that will be the reason behind doing your return authorities. Um, just to send that good back, the, those goods back and to be returned. If you are doing a um, return for like a refund, you would simply do a purchase order in the negative. Uh, and what I mean by that is if we had a product from this company and we've said, listen here, um, we had 30 of these parts come in, but um, three of them were um, issued incorrectly, you would set that as a negative. So that's how you would do that refund option there. Um, so again, 30 was received uh, and three um, three were negative, uh, three, were, three were faulty and we've sent them back for a total refund. That's how you would do um, your refunds from your purchase orders. When doing a bill, like explained earlier, if we are going to do a bill, um, two types of ways you can do that is say with um, your um, like telephone account, so whoever your telephone service provider is or so on, you can add those um, in telephone, whatever that amount is and relate that to customer job, de uh, its relevant department, um, and this field is what we're going to use, the rel uh, related PO and related shipping container, this part we're going to be using for when importing our landed costs for that. Uh, but for now this is just, we're going to create just a regular bill for our telephone account. Um, once that's done, go ahead and hit save. Um, and that's how we'll do a bill. Now if we're going to do a bill for the purchase order, um, have a look at our bill and import those landed costs. This will be the second way we can do that. So if we look at a purchase order, you can do this from creating new uh, or any purchase order. If we want to look at importing costs within this, um, if we go ahead and look at uh, the back here, we can see if we scroll to the right, we can see landed costs, so there's nothing being incurred there, and landed cost percentage, there's nothing being incurred there. If we want to add landed costs to this, um, we'll simply just remember this purchase order number 184, save out of there. We go ahead and create that bill for the goods coming in. So if we say it was from check the supplier, Korea and we add an amount to that. Is there a customer job related to this um, or we can relate this with the purchase order. Related shipping container coming in with it, whatever it's been related to um, but this is going to be the key here, it's related to that purchase order. 
go ahead and hit save. If we then go ahead and look back at that purchase order, we can still see that those landed costs have not been incurred. We go ahead and import costs associated with this. We can see that there is now a cost associated with this. Once we've seen what costs we can import, we simply just hit apply. We apply those costs, hit save, and those costs will be applied. Hit save, and that is how you will import those costs, or those landed costs, into your purchase order. Again, you can check your back order lists. Credits, if you want to run a credit on a bill, this is how you would create that credit for the bill. Shipping containers, you can add different shipping containers, um, create them, again, import costs, add containers to that, and so on. As well as that, um, your uh, foreign exchange rates list. This is where you can create foreign exchanges um, or foreign exchange rates if you have any of them. And if you want to go back and view them, simply double click and it'll take you back to what makes that up. Again, the general information um, and the formula around that foreign exchange rate. Jump back out of there. So there we are. That is your purchasing training, how to do purchases and how that is linked throughout True ERP. So there we are. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.